Hello, everybody. So I've had a lot of people asking how on earth you set up these two axis puppet controllers so that you can make your wings and tail movable in VR chat. It's actually a lot easier than you think. And surprisingly, there's like no tutorials for it online. So I'm going to go ahead and make a tutorial showing you how to do exactly that. And I will also be linking in the description down below my wings and tail that I'll be using for this particular tutorial so that if you want to pick them up and have them yourself, you're more than welcome to. But this technique will apply to literally any avatar, so you can feel free to apply it to literally anything. Like if your character has ear tendrils or cheek feathers with bones in them, doesn't matter. Whatever you want to rig, you can set up using this method and it will make it a puppet controller so that you can wiggle and move it however you want. It's super duper easy and without my significant other showing me how to do it, I honestly would not know what on earth I was doing, <laughs> so I definitely have to thank him for helping me reverse engineer and figure out how to do this. So I, I think that's enough of my intro rambling stuff. Let's go ahead and just dump directly into this tutorial, okay? Okie dokie. So the majority of assets you're actually going to be finding on Gumroad. However, in this particular instance, I'm going to be using the wings that I created, and we're going to animate those in order to use the two-axis puppet. So if you do want them, there will be a link down in the description that you can click on that will take you right to my page to get them. But once you're on my web store, all you have to do is go to the store tab, click on the Aether Wings asset, and then simply add them to cart and purchase. The download file will contain everything you need, including the file itself, the prefab for Unity, the bone dynamics are also in here so that you can set them up for VR chat as well as all of the anim files that we're going to be using in order to make these wings controllable and poseable. Now, if you purchase an asset that does have rigged bones, but it doesn't have any anim files, that's completely fine as well. You can still make something like that work with just a little bit more elbow grease and effort. But if you can get things that have pre-rendered anim files, definitely stick with those if you can. Go ahead and purchase them, download them, and then the next thing you're going to have to obviously do is open the glorious program that is Unity. And I say that with the heaviest amount of sarcasm because Unity is terrible to do anything in and it just, it frustrates me so. <laughs> Once you've launched Unity, you can begin importing your packages. Obviously, you're going to have to import whatever avatar you intend to put the wings on first and go through the steps therein. Now, if you're using the new VRChat Creator Companion, you won't have to import the SDK, but if not, you should always make sure you're importing the SDK first before you do anything else, as this can interrupt the way that the package loads properly, and it can end up breaking the entire package if you're not careful. So always import the SDK first if you're not using the Creator Companion. Then you just need to drag and drop your package. Unity will load for a second, depending on the size of the package and how long it's going to take, and then just import all when the window pops up. It's going to take a minute for everything to come into the scene, so just wait patiently until it does. Once the Unity package has finished loading, simply open up the preset scene, and you'll see that you have your avatar now set and ready to go. Now, at this point, we're going to be ready to actually attach our wings, so make sure that you unpack the prefab for the Nardo or for whichever model you're going to be using. This is a somewhat important step because it can interfere with the animations. Now once this is actually done, we're going to come over here to our assets folder and drag in the wing package or whichever part that you've actually downloaded that you intend to put on. Whatever you're going to be creating the puppet for, even if it's like existing on the avatar, make sure that it's here. In my case, I have a pre-rendered folder that pops up and I'm just going to drag a sample material in here because I intend to replace this. Now you're going to notice right out of the bat that there is a little prefab right here in the window. This prefab is what we're going to be dragging onto the avatar. Now pay very close attention because this part is something that is rather frustrating to deal with and I don't know why Unity is specifically doing it now because it hasn't done this before. Normally when you would go to drag any kind of package on or whatever you would just drag it into the scene and then put it on the armature. But you can see by doing this 
it makes things scale really, really weird. And that's not what we want. We want these to snap directly to the avatar exactly the way they're supposed to. So in order to do that, instead of dragging them onto the armature of the model, grab the asset, place it directly on the primary part of the folder. This, in most times, will snap them directly to where they've been preset in Unity by whichever model creator made them. In my case, I did size them for the Nardo intentionally, since they're part of my Aether Nardo, so they should snap immediately where they should be in the correct area. At this point, there's two things we need to do. Unpack the prefab, and then take this whole thing here, and drop down all your little arrows, and attach these to either the spine or the chest. Once this is in there, we're going to set up the actual fizz bones for this avatar for these wings. So go ahead and add component, VRC fizz bone. We're now going to find the correct bones for each of these wings. If you want to save yourself some time, you can set them all up using one and then just copy the component and make the small adjustments that it needs in order to not flop and flip around. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quickly here, following the presets that I have here in my settings. So it looks like we have, let's see, We've got 0 0.25, 0 0.35, 0 0.1, mobile is 0.1. And then we do have an angle limiter to stop them from flipping and flowing all over the place. That is set to 20. 12, 6.2, I said 6.3. And seven. And then our colliders are 0 0.0008. There's a minor graph on the side that just tapers them down and makes them a little bit more slender on the ends. This is totally not required. It just makes the fizz bone easier to grab when you're in VR. And now there are two primary things that you need to make sure are checked here. One, absolutely make sure that if you don't want other people to be able to pose your wings, you turn off wing posing. If you don't mind it or you want to use it for other things, you can leave this ticked. But the main thing is this little box down here that says is animated. Make sure this is ticked because if you don't select this on anything that you intend to animate, it will not animate in game. They will be stuck in T-pose no matter what you do because VR chat is stupid and it can't tell that there's animation data on the wings. Once this is done, you can go ahead and just simply copy that component, paste it as a new component, and then reassign the bones to wing two and reset that to minus seven. And we're also going to turn the pitch to 13 just to fix it. There we go. Now, once this is all set up here, we're almost done with setting up all of our basic bones. The big thing that we have to do now is assign any materials. So in my particular case here, I just have a standard material that I made to match the Nardo because I just wanted it to be quirky and match. Once you've textured them using the Substance Painter file or painted them yourself, you can then go into setting up the puppet. Once you've assigned whatever materials you intend to use for these wings and your avatar, you can go ahead and select the whole avatar. And on the right hand side, under the expressions, you'll see two menus, Parameters and Menu. We're going to start by setting up the parameters first. Clicking on this will highlight it in the hierarchy so you can find exactly where it is. Click the parameters menu, and then we're going to add two new float parameters. So add two, make sure they are set to floats. And then we're going to title one of them wings H and the other wings V. It doesn't have to be specifically this. You can rename it something similar to this, but I do strongly recommend leaving them like this and making sure there are no spaces because this can interfere with unity sometimes. So wings H and wings V are what you want to go for. With our parameters now set up, we're going to click the little menu icon. Now most avatars will have a lot of sub menus so that you can navigate and find different parts of them. And it keeps everything a little bit more organized. So in the case of the Nardo here, it has body controls on its own sub menu. 
Navigating to the submenus folder, I can find body controls. And from here, I can add a new control. And we're going to just type, simply title this wings control. Change the menu to a two axis puppet. There should be nothing for the parameter. But under parameter horizontal, you want wings H for horizontal. And for parameter vertical, you want wings V for vertical. You don't need to title these other pieces since this is a puppet and you're going to kind of move the wings around depending on how you angle them with your joystick. I do also include a little pre-rendered icon if you want to make it look fancy. So you can just drag that into the icon slot if you want to. Totally and completely unnecessary, but if you like your in-game menus to be a little bit more cosmetically pretty, just go ahead and drag in the icon so that way you have your little wing controller. Next, we're going to navigate to where the FX controller of the avatar is. If you're not sure where it is, click on the avatar in the hierarchy on the left, drop down the Playable Layers tab, and then you'll see FX right on the right-hand side. Click on it to find it inside the menu. With the FX selected, we're then going to open the Animator tab at the top. There's two very important things that we need to do in here. One, we need to go to our Parameters menu, and we need to add two new floats. Now on these new floats, we're going to title them Wings H and Wings V respectively, making sure that they are spelled and capitalized identically to how you put them in the parameters menu earlier. If they are off by the teeniest, tiniest amount, they will not work. They have to be titled identically the same. Then in the Layers menu, we're going to add a new layer. Scroll down to where it is, and we're going to just name it Wings Control. Click the little cog wheel next to it and set the weight to 1. Setting the weight to 1 will tell Unity that we want this parameter to always be active, meaning you don't have to enable it using third-party controls and that this, this will just activate by default inside your menu. Now, in this little window right here to your right, when you have the wings control selected, we're going to right click, create state from new blend tree. I like to title my blend trees to keep them clean. So I'm just going to call it, if I can type here, <laughs> controller. And I don't know how to spell either. It's been a long day. <laughs> Once our controller is set up, double click on it to open the blend tree. Click the blend tree. And then at the top, you need to change the blend type to 2D freeform directional. And under the gesture left and rights, we're going to put wings H and wings V. And then add five motion fields. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. With all of these motion fields installed, we're just going to change a couple of parameters in them. The first one should always be zero, zero. Then we're going to do one and zero, zero and one, zero and minus one, and then minus one and zero. These will set up the four parameters that we need in order to make the wings animated. Go back to the wing folder where you found the anim files, and then we're going to select the very first one, which is the wing default. Drag this animation into the very first slot. You'll notice that it'll be highlighted in the center here. The default position is what the wings will default to, folded slightly back in the body so that they stay roughly out of the way before you animate and move them using the controller. This anim usually is set by default, so you will always spawn in with your wings going to this default position. If for whatever reason they are still T-posing when you spawn in, double check to make sure that loop time is turned off for this anim. This will make sure that it goes on by default. Next, we're going to drag in the other anims. Start by selecting one of them and seeing where it is. So this one on the right hand side is going to become wing hug. This one is going to become wings up. This one is wings down. 
and the left one is wings spread. With all of this set up, your controller should be ready to go. By all rights, it should now be functional in VR chat. When you're ready, you can go ahead and sign into the SDK and build the avatar. If you have any errors such as the streaming mipmaps, just go ahead and hit auto fix for them and then build and publish for Windows or Quest or whatever it is you're doing. Now, if for whatever reason you load into the game and your wings just are not animating no matter what you try, you're not sure what the problem is or they did not come with any anim files, Fear not, because there is a super easy fix that we can do. It just requires a little bit more hard work, which is to build the anim files yourself. Sometimes this happens when you buy an asset that doesn't come with pre-rendered animations, or it's in the case of the anim files are just broken. I, I've screwed up several myself, so, you know, it's entirely possible that sometimes it just happens. But that's okay. We can easily fix it with just a little bit of hard work. All right, so let's assume that for whatever reason, this avatar did not animate or the wings did not come with an animation file. No problem. The very first thing we need to do is duplicate it with control D, hide the primary one. And then under this one here, we're going to right click in the hierarchy, create animation controller, and we'll just call it test. Click on the avatar. And then in the controller on the right hand side, we're simply going to drag the test controller. Now, the reason why you always want to duplicate your avatar before doing this is because you can permanently break an avatar and everything in the package by accident. So I've done it several times and it's insanely disheartening and stressful. Always duplicate your avatar and then work on doing animation stuff. Never animate on the primary avatar ever. Like, never, ever, ever. I can't stress this enough, because trust me, it sucks really, really bad when this happens. <laughs> now, with this selected, make sure that you have the avatar selected in the hierarchy and open the animation tab. Now, you'll notice that we have no animation clips here, so we're going to simply create one. And for this case, we're just going to say that this is going to be the um, Wings Up Anim. Save it. And now we're going to begin animating. So drop down your hierarchy arrows here on the left hand side until we reach our wings. Drop down the wing armatures. And then just keep on shrinking and opening and expanding all those lovely little bones until you reach the very end bone. Once there's no more bones to drop down, we're going to hit this little record window. And if you see here, if I move this camera out of my way, hit the record window, the avatar will go into animation pose. Now with it being in animation pose, we can go ahead and start animating the wings. In order to do this, first we're going to press E on the keyboard, which will open up the shortcut for the rotation wheel, or you can navigate it up on the top left here W being bound to move, E being bound to rotation, R being bound to scaling. But for this purpose, we're mostly just going to use the rotation tool, and that's pretty much all you're going to need in order to make anims like this, so it's super duper easy. I usually like to start at either wing 1 or wing 2 bones, and start by moving the blue axis to just point them the direction that I want them to go. So in this case, because we're doing a wings up animation, I'm going to move each of these bones independently until they roughly get to the position that I want them to go. Making sure that you're moving each bone in unison because unfortunately Unity doesn't have like a mirroring option when it comes to doing animations. So you do have to kind of do each one by itself. But you'll kind of see here as you get going a little bit further, you can push the pose until it's roughly what you want. If you want to move them in at any point, you can always move the other axes in order to rotate the wings and position them more to your liking. Or if it's a tail or whatever it is you're trying to animate, you can even do this with like ears and tongues and like butt feathers and toes and whatever you want to be on a controller. All you have to do is just move all these individual parts. 
Once you're happy with the end position for what you want this animation to look like, stop the recording. Go ahead and select all the keyframes, making sure that they all turn blue. Hit Control C to copy them. Move your animation over by one keyframe and then hit Control V. This will paste the keyframe, making it exactly one increment long. At this point, you need to Control S and save to actually apply this animation. If you do not save this, it will not apply to the animation, it won't apply to the avatar, and it just will not work. You can stop previewing and go back to your project. You now have a new anim file here for the wings up. You're going to repeat this process with each of the four blend tree poses that you want the wings to go into. I usually do up, spread when they're side to side, hug, and down. With all of these animations, you then also need to make one animation being your default animation. This is what they will always default to when you're in game. I personally don't recommend having them spread super far out because you can bump into a lot of people that have phantom sense and just kind of invade their personal space and it's a little bit disrespectful to constantly be bonking into them. So if you can set up your wings to have some kind of default animation that folds them more comfortably behind your avatar, definitely do that. It will save you and your friends a lot of time. Repeating all these animations, once you have them all produced, you simply set up the puppet controller as I showed earlier, and then launch your avatar, and it should all work exactly the same way. The same thing can be applied to any avatar you own, or any avatar that you purchase, any asset that has bones in it can be rigged for puppet controllers. And if you really want to go the extra mile and add a lot of parameter controls, you can go through the effort of animating each wing individually so that you can control each one independently rather than having the animation synchronized with one controller. This is a lot more work and eats a lot more parameters. So on avatars that have a lot of params, you may notice that there'll be conflicts. Other than that, go ahead and launch your avatar and see how they work in game. And voila. Once you have your avatar uploaded into VRChat, you should immediately notice that your controller is working properly if your wings fold to your back like this. Now, if they do not do this, then double check your anim files and make sure that they're placed in the correct spot. For me personally, I prefer to sync them to the chest bone so that way when I move the avatar, they move more naturally with the actual body. Whereas if you put them on the chest and then you twist, they will follow you. If you put them on the spine, however, they tend to clip more often with the shoulders, so that's why I personally prefer to pair them to the chest bone, and all of my animations are going to be synchronized to that. But once you have them synchronized and they snap into place for their default position the way they're supposed to, you'll know they're working properly, at which point you can hold down your controller to open up your uh, little radial menu, go to your body controls, and under your wing controller, you should then have the four directional controls. Pressing left on it will force them into the spread position. Down will droop them. Up will make them spread all the way up into the skies. And of course, moving them to the right will bring them in for a cute little hug. Now, these animations are very snappy because they're just set to the default transition times, which are zero. If you want the transitions to be a little bit smoother, you can always turn down the transitions and tweak them to your liking. This is just the standard import for the default on them. But even with them being like this, you can still get some pretty cool effects with them by just moving around the different controllers. This is just simply a little four axis puppet that you just wiggle and move. And depending on how you position it, you can even get some really cool dynamic poses and effects just to make your avatar seem a little bit more alive, you know? Feel free to adjust these as you like, and if at any time you feel like, you know what, I really like my wings at this pose and I don't want to hold my hand on the controller, click your trigger, and then your wings will freeze in that position. You can still move and wiggle around your fingers and stuff, and it won't affect the controller. To reset it, simply open the controller back up, tap the button once, and then close out of it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> And with that, you've gone ahead and now animated yourself some fantastic wings. Again, this same technique can be applied to do any kind of two axis puppets. So you can animate just about anything you want in Unity, just bearing in mind that the more parameters you have, 
the more chunky your avatar is going to become and the less quest friendly it will be. So keeping these in mind, I hope this tutorial helps more people out there learn how to do this. Again, a huge thank you to my significant other, whom without him, I would not know how to do this myself. And a absolutely huge thank you to Zariza, whose avatars were the inspiration for doing animations and making my own assets in the first place. Their VR chat avatars that they created were the very first time I'd seen puppet controllers and I absolutely loved them. Without them, I would not be where I am today. So please be sure to go and check out Zariza's work on their Gumroad. It will be linked in the description as well as up on screen now so you can go check them out if you'd like. I do highly recommend investing in their avatars if you can to support this awesome creator who helped inspire me to learn and do more stuff like this. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this tutorial up. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day and a fantastic life.